Italy know the size of the challenge in front of them. They ran second in the world, awfully close here in round one. Arguably having enough to win it against France. Kick receipt was not one of their strongest areas, certainly in the first couple of matches. Similarly, ball's getting charged down from their own 22, but they'll live to see another day. There was a bit of an Irish knock on there as Capuozzo looks to try and get going. And this is Italy, ball in hand inside the first minute. They'll be looking to try and settle themselves. No! Nicotera. It's like holding front! Man with a couple of extra metres close to ground. But then Hugo Keenan, man in such great form. Ireland's first spell with the ball, straight through Casey and Byrne. It's going to be Andrew Porter, one of six who started this fixture last year, along with Van der Fleer and Doris in the pack. Casey again, Byrne, looking for the options, the key. Giving it to him on the outside, and Van der Fleer is getting away here. This could be an early break for Ireland. Keenan on the left-hand shoulder, and James Lowe is there, looking for the corner. James Lowe dotting down. We're going to go upstairs for the grounding, I'm pretty sure. Look at his eyes. It would suggest... Marius. We'll listen. On-field decision, no try. We've not got a grounding. So we just need to check the grounding. We're happy with touch. On the right, field so decision, a grounding for you. no Maybe. try. It's a tremendous break from Van der Fleer through the middle. And you thought for all of the money, the ball would get out to the left wing and Lowe would add to his uh, tally. Here we go. Are we get it to you now, Mike? I need to say that in slow motion. I don't think he has grounded it. In control. That's a frame-by-frame yeah. frame number, isn't it? <laughs> the ball and he's checked so early on. Kapowatsa, no, he's dropped it. Correct, correct decision from the referee. Wayne Barnes is there, he can't see Wayne. Okay, Mikey, he's just control. shielded by Lowe. No, he's, he slammed it down. Actually, a guy of his quality and skill should have really grounded that. This is the one. This is the one. No. So it looks oh. like he's dropped it. In, in angle. Well, it's all about being in control, isn't yeah. it? So, probably the last angle is the best angle. We used to look at good old downward pressure, but these days they want to see that the player's in control as it's grounded. Well... Now, that's the one. It definitely didn't have uh, downward pressure. Okay, Mike, there is distance. Yeah. Wait, wait yeah. on. So, let me just get distance. you back on the mark. Do yes. you want me to tell you how to see? Yes. OK, so he's lost control. There's clear yeah. separation just before the ball is grounded. Okay. No try. Knock on inning ball. Clear separation was the word. <laughs> The crowd love it, but what a start to this. We knew it was going to be a crackerjack game. Looking on the dummy wrap around from Casey. Ryan, the captain, gets it away to low this time. He'll play it back in field, and it is going to be the skipper who goes over for the score. No doubt about that one, and Ireland are on the board. Well, again, that was far too easy. The first initial hit. On the number eight, Jack Cohen, it was great from Italy. They pushed him back, he didn't get... Well, it was almost a big dominant tackle, the two guys, and it's a simple numbers game. And I would have okay. to suggest, and I see it again, Padovani on the right wing has come in when he didn't really have to... There you go, he's coming on Bundiake. Oh, my goodness me. And that's a simple score for James Lowe, just back inside to Ryan, the captain. Middle tip-ons. Cries of Italia, Italia go up and they might have the chance of the two-on-one here. Italy into the 22, still not held, and up to the five-metre line. It's the quick pick from Vardy, it's the score for Italy! Morning, morning. Building through the 22 and then taking the opportunity for the quick ball. And the Gloucester man strikes back for the home side. Absolutely fantastic play. Back yourself, this is the new Italy. We didn't show too many glimpses of it against England, they did against France. Again, it's a numbers yeah. game, you are trying to create an overlap. 
It happens, can only just inside there. He's going the big number eight, pushing people aside. And this is what you want from a nine, instinctively. No one's at the guard area on that right-hand side. Look at this, big busts. A numbers game, as I said, it comes out. The, the ruck speed has been fantastic. Varney again, a little Terry around the base. Again, as Ireland started superbly well. This is a great crafted try from Italy. They had people outside, it wasn't needed. What a game we've got. Garbisi to try and add the two. Uh, Ross Byrne failed and he's able to. In it goes, brought down Mark. from Henderson. And the Fleer will play away to Casey and Byrne. And Hansen joining, and then a key, and it's lovely for Keenan. And Keenan twisting and turning, escaping the shackles and under the posts. The Leinster man's been on fire throughout the Guinness Six Nations. And he fires Ireland to their second try of the match. Again, it's all about the passing, all about out of the back door. And Bundiaki just again. As Cannononi made a break from eight, it's the key. Just watch this. That's beautiful from Byrne. Then out from Hansen, and it's just it couldn't quite get bring him down, Hugo Keenan. Underneath the post, this will be a seven-pointer. There it is. Is he fancying a run here? He's got a wall of green shirts coming towards him, but actually it works out quite nicely to find Tommaso Manancello. And Manancello puts the boot to the ball, into the 22 goes Casey. Casey's got some work to do up against the Benetton centre, and it will be the Italian penalty. Listen to the Stadio Olimpico's response. Shoulder off the ball. There's a shoulder off the ball, I think it was uh, Mac okay. Hansen. Well, we know who to blame if it doesn't go through. Three. This is Galvisi for three. Never in doubt, Darren Morris. Italy up to ten. And Casey well, yeah. just struggling to get it away too quickly. Italy momentarily had no one in the backfield. No, move away. Just dropped a couple back there now. Garbisi, one of those as Casey will play away for Byrne and it'll pop up in the midfield. Straight out the back from Ryan. Oh, and it's good from Ireland through Van der Fleer, who's finding another one of those gaps. And Lowe struggled to catch it, but did and fed Bundy a key. It's sublime from the Irish. In for their third try. Van der Fleer okay. setting them on their way again. And a key is involved in everything. Well, it's that left hand side, isn't it? They keep coming down, the power in the game down that left hand side. And they can't stop the Italy at the moment. He's a big unit, as we know, but it's the power game. It's that guy, Joe, James Lowe, that basically intercepted this ball. Is it Garbisi? This is over the top. Again, it wasn't there, it wasn't on, but they do force it. And sometimes when you force it, you make the mistake. And that was the mistake. And when it comes out, again, it's a numbers game. Capowatso's just held up. Garbisi can't do anything. And Bundia looks to pass, but he just rides Varney. Yes, yeah. He's that big a lad. He's that powerful. He can carry him over. Nice. Van de Fleer. Beautiful hands back inside, and this one is given. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Faz goes wild to the 10, uh, burn, and then see what goes. But here we go again. There's going to be more of the same. Kelleher with the second rows for company. Then Jack Conan coming back round the other way. Van der Fleer trying to help with the shove. Casey, this time they'll look to the right. This time, Mac Hansen will score. It's been a while since Mac Hansen's been on the score sheet for Ireland. His fourth for his country, the fourth of this match, and the bonus point. It was coming that time. Craig Casey does absolutely right. Italy think the pressure is going to come on the left hand side. They stack it there, they don't, they go right with Conan. And then one more ruck straight out. Here we go to the right hand side. Again, Casey's in there. Quick pass, one more. Good vision, good skill. That's good. We said, Lovely yes. play. McCluskey's out to uh, Hansen. And you ain't stopping him from that distance. Just a second try in. 
seven Guinness Six Nations games for Mark Hansen. Begging. Van der Fleer. What's the face to a key? Oh, it's the intercept. It's going to be a chance for Pierre Bruno to get on his bike over the 10 metre line. Bruno will not be caught. Italy get their second try of the match. Right on the stroke of half time. What was a happy Andy Farrell coming down the stairs may turn to a little more of a grimace. Super gamble from Bruno. There you go, for all of the money, they were flooding that right-hand side, wasn't it? Bundiaki, who's been a, a thorn in Italian side, actually gifts Bruno a good score. It's a foot race, Van der Fleer ain't going to stop him, none of the wingers are going to stop him. Just a absolute line to the try line. Bit of pressure in the midfield, he actually went for it. Crowley looks on, Thomas O'Allen looks on, and again, just what they wanted, just before they go in, at half-time for a cup of tea or whatever they do, an energy drink. It's given them a bit more belief, the crowd believe now they could possibly do it. And I said before, I thought it was going to be an exciting game, and it is. They may just sell a drink or two more at half-time <laughs> after that. You're still working, by the way. Garbisi adds the extras. And where Ireland looked wholly in control of the ship, bar what was initially one try from Italy, the intercept makes it two before half-time and gives us a slightly more tantalising scoreline at the break than we might have expected. Ireland four tries and a bonus point, but Italy hitting back at half-time in Rome. It's Italy 17, Ireland 24. Lowe then takes it up as Casey will dig for the ball. All but we're coming back for a penalty. I was just going to say, Nick, sorry to jump in, mate, Andrew Porter, he just put his shoulder in. Again, not malicious, but he just uh, hit a blue shirt, don't quite know who it was. It will be the three. The first points of the second half go the way of Italy. Cutting Ireland's lead, two four points. Was it going to be Brex or Bruno? Well, Seemed happy enough to play on. Well, Bruno was in front of Brex, and I'm sure Brex touches, so that's offside, accidentally offside. But again, the referee's there. Ireland get in and get the turnover, and they've been leading oh, yeah. that statistic all game. Jumper stuff as we've had all game, really but it is what's required, then it's for Doris once more off Baird. Into the 22 aisle and continue to make the metres, and then it'll be Mac Hansen on the shoulder of Connor Murray. They kept bashing at the door, yeah. and in the end they went in round the back. Mac Hansen with the score, and Ireland hoping that they can finally put this fixture to bed. Again, Murray in control, Hansen just popping that ball back on the left, just keeping it simple, giving the forwards one out, and Marnie's at the centre of things, yeah, I know, boy. Italy in possession, one last roll of the dice, oh, they've given away the intercept, it's going to be James Lowe, who hopes he has the final word in Rome. I think Wayne Barnes' flag will be the one that tells us the 80 minutes, or 83, is up in Rome. Italy are tired of being called valiant, but it's been an excellent display from them. That means the handshakes from Andy Farrell and his Irish charges have an extra bit of weight and meaning of what they've had to achieve in Rome this afternoon. Michele Lamoureux will hope he's back to fitness in a couple of weeks for the next round. Four tries in the first half for Ireland. They had to work hard for the two in the second. As Italy drove them mighty close. It's finished in Rome, Italy 20, Ireland 34.